From its peak in 2000, by 2003, the NASDAQ Technology Index had lost three quarters of its entire value. It was about a six months spread at the time when it went from glorious highs to mediocre lows. It's like catching a falling knife, isn't it? We lost a lot of money. Did we know we were in a bubble? Yeah. You just didn't know how big the bubble was. Even experts can find themselves caught up in bubbles. I have to confess, um, I too got caught up in it at one stage. There were people in this building coming up to me and saying, have you heard about this company or that company? They're just taking off. You've got to get in while the going is good. And I did invest in one dot-com company. And I think I've still got the shares 10 years later, but I might as well paper the bathroom with them because they're worth absolutely nothing. I knew it was madness. I knew that a, a company that had the turnover of, uh, I don't know, a, a large pub couldn't really be worth the same as um, a giant business employing thousands of people. But um, I did get caught up just for a moment. The impact of the bubble bursting might seem limited, but the effects are quickly felt by ordinary consumers through pensions and savings. The bursting of a house price bubble, as for example in 2007, can have a particularly damaging effect on personal finances. Well, bubbles impact ordinary people, of course, through if you have a recession and people lose their jobs and was all that. But I think uh, also they lose through pensions, they lose through any investments they've got. They may also lose in housing. People in the UK who bought a house, let's say after about 2004, I think by the end of this they will be underwater. Bubbles that are associated with huge amounts of borrowing, or put another way, huge amounts of credit expansion, debt expansion, tend to be very, very destructive when they burst because it leaves an enormous number of people and institutions with negative equity, either bust. I think the most vulnerable group in society are the relatively unsophisticated retail investor for the simple reason that they have less understanding of what is going on. They may not always know precisely how and when to get out of a market, as opposed to more sophisticated financial firms. Ordinary investors uh, and ordinary people tend to suffer when bubbles burst. They get suckered in right at the end. The impacts can be severe, though there can be longer-term benefits. When a bubble bursts, you have all sorts of people affected. But if that particular bubble has, in fact, been related to some sort of technological revolution, and if that technological revolution has then had lasting consequences for the economy, so after the dot-com bubble burst, we still have the internet. After the railway bubble burst, we still have the rail lines and the trains. Then that obviously will still continue to be the source of growth in the economy. Those bubbles, they're disruptive, but they seem to be an inevitable product of fundamental innovation. At the end of it, you are left with a more productive economy. You know, historians will look back and say, we were right to think the internet was an extraordinary thing. It did change the world, even if a lot of the companies that were floating were fraudulent and the bubble went crazy. That was the biggest stock market bubble, certainly in the history of the United States and perhaps even the UK. It transformed uh, the world in, in a very big way. <laughs>